Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmach, and I'm glad to present for you the new episode of our daily wrap-up series. The amount of announced contributions to the program of humanitarian aid to the countries of Africa and Asia is almost $190 million. This was stated by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba. According to him, more than 30 states and the EU have already announced their financial participation in the Grain from Ukraine humanitarian program. Today, the total amount of contribution planned by the partners is almost $190 million, the minister said. According to him, Ukraine is working on expanding the circle of countries that support the humanitarian program. In general, by the end of spring, we will send about 60 vessels with humanitarian cargo. It is literally saves millions of people from starvation. And I am grateful to all our partners who joined the Ukrainian initiative. Another our initiative, Grain Export, made it possible to bring almost 13 million tons of Ukrainian foodstuffs to the world food market. A significant contribution to world security. And do you know what contribution Russia makes to world markets? They send troops and weapons to unstable regions. The mass media report that the Russian private military company Wagner, considered a terrorist organization by the EU parliament, started recruiting militias among prisoners in African countries. Then they deployed them to the front between Russia and Ukraine. Russia even tries to recruit high-risk criminals, including those accused of rape and murder. Russia's predatory policy towards countries of the Global South and the actions of Russia-backed militants in Africa are aimed at deliberately creating hotbeds of instability. And that is why it is now important for the countries of the Global South to protect themselves from Russia-led information warfare and sanction Russia's malicious media for the sake of protecting the future of their own countries. Ukraine calls on the countries of the Global South to join the Ukrainian peace formula and not to allow Russia to influence political processes or directly encroach on the sovereignty of all states in the world. Russia threatens the security of neighboring countries and entire regions. It uses propaganda and disinformation around the world to promote false narratives, incite hatred and carry out anti-governmental policies. Today, Russia is using hunger as weapon of war against Ukraine and to create division and further instability among the rest of the world. Jens Stoltenberg, Secretary General of NATO. Ukraine was and will be one of the largest exporters of grain and oil in the world. Before the full-scale invasion, we were the second largest exporter of grain in the world and the seventh largest exporter of natural oil. However, despite the war, Ukraine remains committed to its obligations as a global food security guarantor, and we are constantly looking for new roads for food experts. Ukraine has already doubled the volume of experts through the territory of Poland compared to the summer of this year. Yes, we could use more seaports, for example, Mykolaiv. Before the full-scale war, a set of agricultural products destined for export were shipped through the port of Mykolaiv. In the current conditions, this can be an additional 2.5 million tons of export of agricultural products per month. Therefore, the involvement of Mykolaiv ports in the Green Initiative is appropriate, important and extremely necessary for the city. Its residents and people are suffering from hunger all over the world. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky visited Donbass. According to the tradition, on the day of the armed forces of Ukraine, the supreme commander goes to the front. Although the front has increased many times this year, Zelensky again went to Donbass. Then he met with the Ukrainian military and simply talked with our soldiers. We are in the east of our country, and probably today this is the most difficult direction, which protects not only the east of our country, but protects our entire country. We all understand that it is not easy for our armed forces today in any of the directions, because they are fighting with, we will not say which army of the world. For us, it is definitely the last one. Let me remind you that in mid-November, Zelensky came to the liberated Kherson, when Russian troops were stationed a few kilometers away and could still strike the city which is what they are doing now. Yesterday, the president also visited our wounded soldiers in a hospital in Kharkiv. I should note that this city is still under Russian attack. And despite all the dangers that could be, the president is not afraid to go to the frontline areas now. He was not afraid to do so in 2019, when he personally explained to the soldiers the need to withdraw some of the troops that time. And now I would like to compare Volodymyr Zelensky with Putin. He sits at a long table not only with the military, but also with his closest associates and doesn't let anyone near him. But the Kremlin can do a lot with words. For example, according to Putin's spokesman Peskov, 
Putin also plans to visit Donbas, but so far he has only gone to the Crimean bridge. Well, the question of the trip remains open. The Russian mass media reported about it, but they are not a reliable source. And even based on what was shown on federal channels, there are a lot of questions about the inf information. I will not show footage from there because we show only verified information, but I will still pay attention to some nuances from the Crimean bridge. The TV story about Putin's visit is very short and fragmentary. There is no confidence in the authenticity of the fact that Putin really was on the Kerch bridge. Putin chose Mercedes as his vehicle, directly expressing his distrust of the Russian automobile industry. It does not follow from the plot that Putin drove the entire bridge and drove into the occupied Crimea himself. Therefore, the symbolism of the event is nullified. If automobile traffic is opened on the bridge, the railway will not soon be used there. The propagandists themselves are talking about September next year. But whether they will be able to do, under the pressure of sanctions and economic restrictions and possible strikes by the armed forces of Ukraine, we will see. Russia continues its well-known strategy of forcing negotiations through outright terror. Kremlin officials openly admit that Russian missile attacks target critical infrastructure in Ukraine in order to create unbearable conditions for the civilian population in winter. The European Parliament recognized Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism due to the brutal and inhuman actions committed against Ukraine and its citizens since the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion. Earlier, the NATO Parliamentary Assembly has also designated Russia and its regime as terrorists. It also called for the creation of a special tribunal to hold Putin and his accomplices accountable for the crime of aggression against Ukraine. Russia responded to the decision of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly and the European Parliament with another barbaric missile attack on Ukraine. It has once again demonstrated to the world that it does not seek peace talks and remains focused on the further war, terror and atrocities. We talked with Jan Olbricht about the expectations from the European Parliament in future and how the Western world can put pressure on Russia. I suggest we listen to him. We are all, all aware here about the tragic situation, in, uh, especially in Ukraine. And of course, the, this uh, the tendency made by Putin to destroy you. This is, this is quite clear for us, and this is extremely dangerous. And of course, it doesn't make us optimists, but we have, because we have to be active to, to, to first to help Ukraine to defend, and next to save you. But what, is, what about the optimism which we can hear now is, uh, European Union is the peace project from the very beginning. It was to, to keep the peace inside the European Union among the, the, the states who decided to go together just, just seven years after the war, so before fighting each other. So, and they decided to be together and they still want to be together. Now we are 27 and we still want to be together. So I think this is a very optimistic that there's such a long time that for, for future we know that we will be together. We will probably have some problems among us, we will discuss etc. And we are ready to face the new challenges which will be extremely difficult. We are also, also ready to enlarge EU. So this is also optimistic. We don't know how, how many years it will take. But anyway, this is the, it means that uh, the European Parliament uh, shows very clear that the project is not over. It's very dynamic, it's living, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, re reflecting the, uh, the, the new situation. So, you know, when you say optimistic, it doesn't mean that we are optimistic concerning, for example, the war in Ukraine, because we hope it will finish and Ukraine will, of course, will be the big winner. But of course, the, uh, this is, we should be very realistic. Optimism is about the European institution and about being together in future, which will make us stronger. Talking about enlargement, we understand uh, that uh, it will cost much, much money for European Union to rebuild Ukraine to accept it to European family. So how much time will it take and uh, is uh, European Union ready to uh, enlarge the uh, financial help uh, to make it uh, uh, more faster? 
Yeah, you know, the, the, the in la, each enlargement was different. Some of the enlargements were mainly based on economic elements. Some of them are, uh, were not based on economy, it was based much more on a political approach. Like, for example, all the Central Eastern Europe was not about money. It's not a, to, to have a bigger single market which will bring profit. In contrary, it was very expensive. Uh, future enlargement is also the, the very complex. It's not only about money, it's about safety. It's about the safety of the whole continent. It's actually more symbolic in this situation, according to war in Ukraine, right? Yeah, but it's symbolic, but at the same time, you know, it's, we have to be very pragmatic. Pragmatic means that to have the Ukraine with us in future, it's, it's our safety. It's not only for, for Ukraine, it's our safety. So, but of course, the, uh, we, will, we will have to some elements to be achieved um, one by one. First is to help Ukraine to to uh, to live normally, more or less. I mean, to have the balanced situation. That's why we in Strasbourg we will vote a special law which will uh, allow to go to the financial market and to borrow the money and next to make the loans for Ukraine, and the member states will pay the interest. So it will be 18 billion. But this is not to reconstruct. Is just to help Ukraine today, during the war. Very often, the people from Ukraine uh, they ask me, "Okay, what about the money for the reconstruction?" I mean, it's not today. Today is the money for functioning, for guarantee the the, the situation of um, of surviving during the very difficult time. Of course, the, the moment will come of reconstruction. This will be another issue. Of, of course, the European Union will try to, to play a very important role in the reconstruction. But be, let's be very frank. Today, we have to think about the people, about the winter, about the condition for, for living. The, of course, this is about uh, uh, different elements of economy. This is about pension system. It's, it's everything. So that's why we, we have to guarantee Ukraine today the, the help, financial help. Next, to think about reconstruction. How long it will take? It depends on, on the war and depends on the process. So uh, I'm not the, uh, this kind of politician which can say, okay, it can take some, this, uh, the number of years. I think we have to have the war uh, to finish as soon as possible, but not with all con uh, under each condition. So it's because this, this war is not the war between two partner, different countries. This is the attack of someone uh, on, on Ukraine. So this is a different element. So first, we have to finish uh, the, the whole process. I mean, I hope the Ukraine will finish it. And uh, next, to discuss the reconstruction. Today, we have to, we have to help Ukraine to, to, to live in a <coughs> certain way normally, which is, of course, impossible. Two more questions you were saying about uh, um, stop and finish in the war and to understand that tomorrow's day will be very important for us, uh, uh, that uh, we'll uh, have a chance to uh, have a recognition of Russia as a terroristic state. Yeah. So what will it give, uh, actually, not just symbolic, but actually for Europe, for Ukraine, and how it will help stop the war faster? Yeah, you, you know, this is the... Uh when you look from outside, or European Parliament, each Parliament's work, you can have the impression that this is just like resolution, speaking, talking, etc. No, but the reality is different. When we were discussing the possible candidate countries for Europe, I mean Ukraine as a candidate country, it's, it has very concrete consequences. It's not just declaration, it's, it's nothing purely political. No, it, it will impose obligation on you because we have to work with Ukraine as a, uh, as a candidate country in coming years. Um, this is first. And when you speak about the um, terrorist state, of course, it's, not, it's again not just words. Because in many countries, including US, when you call the uh, terrorist state, there are concrete legal consequences of this. It's also about the going to the, um, to, the, uh, to, to the Hague, to the court. Of course, the, when, you, when you call the state as the terrorist state or the terrorist regime, which will be in our document, of course, it opens of, uh, also the way for different um, uh, approach to the, uh, to the no, to decide who is guilty, I mean, who, who, uh, and who is the victim. So I think I, I just want to underline that this is, uh, it was not very easy in the, inside the parliament to, to find the, the best definition because the parliamentarians were not pro against Ukraine because the, the, among us there are lawyers who knows that each word is important. 
each uh, each wording and legally it's important so that's why it's it's politically important for for ukraine it's important for the next steps of course like the hague uh, uh, court and talking about Putin and his approaches to all the international uh, law rules, we understand that the only thing that can stop him is delimiting him in money. I mean, sanction, other instruments, whatever. We see embargo on oil and uh, um, other products, energetics, but it doesn't stop him as far. But uh, on the other hand, uh, do you see that the lobby of uh, Russian uh, money in European some other countries uh, still strong and the money that helped the, him to uh, stay afloat still working. So uh, sanction other instruments, this recognition of terroristic state, what else can help him to get out of money for war? You know, the, uh, you know much better than me that the, uh, the Russian lobbying was always uh, uh, very efficient in, in the last years around the world. So, and the, well, this is what they are doing now. They are doing now, and of course, the, but I don't think this is just, just about sanctions. But this is a question of the, uh, of the global scale and the losing the trust or not for the next, uh, uh, next steps. So I think what, that's why it is important for, is the first sanctions, which of course block the, the, the trade, but also to, to work with the other countries, like for example in Africa, in Asia. Uh, to, to, to work with them, because the, uh, this is the question, when you speak about the global market, this is a question of trust. And of course the question of who is on which side. When you look at the UN declarations, very often you can see the dynamic. The number of countries who are supporting or abstain is changing. And I think it's changing slowly, slowly to the uh, um, uh, anti-Russian uh, uh, approach because they see the consequence. We uh, recent, I remember that we we recently had the prime minister of one of the countries in Africa, and he, we didn't think uh, that he would speak during his speech inside the parliament about the war in Ukraine for his country, because the, 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 the how important the. Co economic consequences are for this country. I mean, because the whole channels are broken. So that, that's why, you know, the uh, awareness of the consequence, global consequence, are growing. So I think the sanction is one of the elements. The other element is to, to, to construct the whole network around, uh, the, on the global scale uh, of the countries which, uh, which will have the common way of uh, approaching the whole process. So this is this is the way. I don't think things that money is just just can solve everything. Money is the one of the elements. But uh, what is important is who is the partner for whom. We were watching very carefully the U.S. China talks, etc. This is the the the, are the elements which we we should be aware. Of. The last question: the victory on the battlefield in Ukraine will stop the war because uh, we understand from the historical uh, remembrance that uh, it doesn't stop Russia. It will just uh, give Russia uh, a time to reload their uh, missile rockets and start it over again. So, what's the future of Russia? We'll see in this situation. You know, this is the most difficult question, difficult and don't question, yeah, but they, they don't expect me that I will answer this kind of question clearly. I think that uh, uh, the end of the war is the moment that, uh, 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 that the, the Russian approach to imperial policy is over. So it means that uh, they, they don't use this instrument. The question when, in which moment, etc., this is another question I, I cannot answer very, very clearly. Uh, and not because I don't want to answer, because I, don't, just, I just don't know. Of course they, they want to destroy the Western democracy. I mean, as, as a whole model. This is their, their goal. Ukraine is the first step. So this is for, for them is not, not, not the end. What we are repeating here in Strasbourg, I mean, be careful. Because if you are from Spain and Portugal, you think you are very far, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are very close. You are very close because the influence can be. So that's why you should be united, tough, very clear. And uh, hoping that um, that all the elements together will will bring it to the to the uh, to the uh, the end of the war. I hope as soon as possible. But not all the stopping of the uh, uh, battlefield means the the end of the war. It was the member of the European Parliament, Jan Olbricht, about further steps of Europe in the fight against Russian aggression. We conclude today's video with this. My name is Pavel Stelmach, subscribe to UATV English and thank you for watching.
See you soon.